composition. Gotta have it. Let's take a look at how John Singer Sargent designed his paintings starting now. Hey guys, Cody here with Fount Atelier, and today we are going to continue our three part video series taking a look at the work of famous artist John Singer Sargent. In the last video, we studied Sargent's technical ability and we talked about what made him such a master with the paintbrush. You can catch up on that video right here. As I mentioned last time, when I evaluate an artist's work, I'm looking for three things. Their technical execution, the way their work is composed, and the conceptual meaning behind the work. In this video, let's spend a little bit of time talking about his composition. Composition is a critical component of any work of art. The best pieces are designed in a way that draw in the viewer, engaging them and keeping them interested. Often the first thing that grabs our attention in a drawing or painting isn't actually the detail or the brushwork, but it's the composition, even if we don't really realize it. Let's revisit our three sergeant paintings, the daughters of Edward Darley Boyd, Lady Agnew, and the alligators. The first thing you always want to consider when evaluating a composition is the concept of the piece. Now, we'll skip that one for now as we'll get into that more in the next video. Safe to say, all three of these paintings convey the concept um, through their design quite nicely. Generally, the next thing to look for in a strong design is a primary focal point. In Daughters of Edward Darley Boyd, we have a potential problem because there are four girls. Can they all be the focal point? Well, sort of. Two of the girls are way back in the shadows, uh, while the other two are closer to us. If I had to pick one girl to be the focal point, I'd say the one on the left stands out the most. You could argue that the girl in front could be it as well, but the one in the left is standing in front of that um, kind of blank wall, and so that creates some nice contrast as far as um, detail and values, which makes her stand out nicely. You know, it's kind of odd to have a main focal point be so far over to the edge in a composition, um, but you could argue that it works pretty well here. Notice how the torso of the girl sitting in front leads us right to the girls in the background, and the edge of the carpet takes us to the fourth girl standing to the side. This triangle, along with the fairly boring environment the girls are in, keeps our eyes trapped in the painting, moving from girl to girl to girl to girl. The angled rug offers another triangle-like shape to kind of help ground the girls within the rest of the composition. In Lady Agnew, we have a much different approach. Instead of several figures in the painting, we only have one, which is a little more typical for a traditional formal portrait. This makes it pretty easy to identify where the focal point is. Our eyes are drawn immediately to her gaze and her face, which is helped by the strong contrast of her dark hair, eyes, and eyebrows on her pale face. It seems like or feels like she's looking right at us. The chair, you'll notice, is cleverly positioned a little bit to the left, not straight ahead, and that helps create a bit of asymmetrical balance in the piece, which is more important than you might think. This keeps things interesting without getting too formal. Detail simplifies, we get farther and farther away from the focal point and the ribbon on her dress really kind of leads our eye up to her necklace and then to the focal area, which is her face. In Muddy Alligators, much like the first painting we looked at, there is a lot going on. Our eyes almost get lost in all the shadows of the gators and it creates a lot of abstract shapes. And honestly, things get a little confusing. In my opinion though, there is one focal area that really stands out. In the center of the design is the biggest alligator and you'll notice another gator resting its head on his back. The gator's head is casting a really strong distinct blue shadow that creates a punch of contrast um, on the big gator um, where uh, all that light is shining off of its back. This sharp contrast grabs our eye and makes for a really strong focal area. I love how simple the surrounding landscape is compared to the rest of the gators, drawing us right, uh, right to them. The alligator in the water in the foreground, you'll notice, is kind of angled and coming toward us. Um, 
almost like he's getting ready to snap at us. And that really kind of grabs um, our attention toward the bottom of the piece and, and draws us into the composition. Sargent was a master at design, as each of these paintings attest. Although at first glance they feel natural enough to just kind of be quick snapshots, it, in reality the compositions are really well thought out and planned. Every detail is taken into consideration and it is clear that Sargent was more concerned with creating a great design than trying to capture every detail verbatim, just as he sees it. What do you see in these paintings? Do you have any thoughts on how Sargent handled the composition here? Leave me a comment down below and let's have a discussion. In the final video of this series, we'll take a look at the third component of Sargent's art that made him so special, the meaning behind the paintings. Until next time.